today I'm going to be talking about a demonstration called Pepper's Ghost. So what is Pepper's Ghost? It's a special effect to initially, uh, back in the 19th century, make a ghost appear on stage for plays. And this was named after John Henry Pepper, who popularized this in 1862. Uh, and it's used in plays, concerts, amusement parks, even to the modern day. And the uh, picture to the left here shows the uh, initial use of Pepper's ghost for making a ghostly apparition appear during a play. And how this works uh, uses some uh, pretty fundamental optical principles, which I will get into. So what is the physics of Pepper's ghost? We have to acknowledge that glass or plastic has a different index of refraction than air because it's a different material than air. Because of this, uh, when light reaches a boundary uh, or that interface between the air and let's say the glass, um, some of it gets reflected and the rest of it gets transmitted. To understand this in more mathematical terms, uh, we have Snell's law in equation form over here, which is ni sine theta i equals nr sine theta r. So the ni sine theta i part refers to when the light is traveling through air. So ni means the index of refraction uh, of incidence. That uh, refers to the air, uh, which has an index of refraction of 1. And then the sine theta i, theta i being the angle, the incidence angle, or the angle at which um, the light is traveling when it hits that boundary. And then the n sub r means the index of reflection, refraction of the uh, reflected aspect. So what that means is when the light hits that boundary and travels through the glass or plastic. For this demonstration, it's going to be plexiglass. So when the light hits that plexiglass, it bends a certain way. And that's governed by the index of refraction of that plexiglass, along with how the light is bending. So the angle at which that light is bending. We can see that at work on the image to the right here, which refers to the demonstration that I'm about to show. Let's say we have some smartphone or television displaying an image. So this screen is displaying some sort of image. In this case, there's a pineapple, but it can be anything. This image uh, travels to the plexiglass that I talked about, this plexiglass pyramid. And it uh, travels up there and then uh, gets reflected and then turns into a virtual image. Let's say you're looking in the mirror uh, to get ready and you see yourself. The image that you're seeing of yourself is what we refer to as a virtual image. So it's not actually there, but our brain just sees an image. You know, it's not going to say, oh, this is a virtual image. It just sees what it sees. The same type of thing works with this pyramid as well, because when you look straight into the pyramid, you're going to see that virtual image. And you're just going to see that uh, pineapple or whatever other object floating, you're not going to say, oh, that's a virtual pineapple. It just, your brain perceives that to be actually there. With that, uh, we can get into some more fun math revolving around uh, this demonstration. These uh, equations called the Fresnel equations actually govern um, how much light is going to get reflected and transmitted. And we see this picture to the right here. It's actually pretty similar to the image I showed in the last slide because we just have an incoming light beam, which is this pink line right here. Uh, so it hits um, whatever boundary or surface, the plexiglass, and then gets reflected. But also some of that light gets uh, transmitted, which is will become important later on. There are certain angles that the light's traveling at. You know, it's going to hit the boundary at a certain angle and get reflected back at a certain angle. It gets transmitted at a certain angle. And there's some directionality to all this. Doing some geometry, we can actually derive these four equations that I list here. 
Uh, there is the transmission equations, which refer to T, and then the reflection equations, uh, which are R. And I'm not going to get too into this, but pretty much the index of refraction of the air and the plexiglass play an important role, as well as those angles that I was talking about. There is these S and P. Why do we have S and P? Again, not going to get too into that, but it essentially means that light actually has a preferred direction in which it travels. So we have to take into account that directionality of the light, uh, which is why we have uh, separate equations for these. I hope that even though this is a simple effect, it's pretty powerful and has a lot of cool math behind it. Getting back to the play that I was talking about, I bring this back this picture that I showed initially, but I also have this schematic to the right to make more sense of it in terms of physics. So we have this uh, ghost, this ghost object, as we call it. You know, it's not an image, but rather an object. And there's this lit stage, and we need, of course, the light to illuminate this object. So the light uh, illuminating the object, so the light travels through the to the glass and then gets reflected to the audience. And note that the type of glass is important. I kept saying plexiglass because plexiglass is actually a very reflective type of glass, yet you can see right through it. So its uh, transmission is pretty high. So because of that, it's important to have those characteristics because we don't want to actually see the glass when we're looking at a play. Uh, you know, we just want to see the play and the actors. But mm, the glass allows for this ghostly apparition to appear because once the light is reflected off this glass, that virtual image is formed and the audience is just looking straight at the stage. So they just perceive that ghostly apparition without perceiving that glass or the object that's hidden away. So that comes to the discussion, is Pepper's ghost a hologram? It sounds like a hologram, but it's actually not. Holograms actually work by having two laser beams illuminate the object at various angles. The lasers actually create interference patterns that are recorded onto some sort of holographic film when that happens, you get that three-dimensional photograph or a hologram, whereas Pepper's ghost is just simply an optical illusion using the laws of reflection, essentially. And with that, for a hologram, holograms are used in, you know, popular culture such as Star Wars, you know, Princess Leia comes up to communicate as a hologram. But you can use Pepper's Ghost as a less expensive alternative to achieve this hologram effect. Some applications uh, in the modern day, some everyday type of stuff, we have the presidential teleprompter. Teleprompters are pretty uh, present throughout speakers and TV shows, spe presidential speeches. For the presidential teleprompter, the president or whoever's speaking stands on this podium, and then he stands here, but there's actually a piece of reflective glass that's propped up on some sort of stand or pole, and the words are displayed from some sort of monitor and then interact with this reflective glass to to make sure that the president can see the words while not breaking eye contact with his audience. Other types of teleprompters are actually using at cameras, so let's say news anchors or TV stars. The reflective glass is actually put on the camera itself. It's important to note that when these screens um, display these words, they have to be backwards because when they interact with the reflective glass, they're going to be flipped. This flipping ensures that the words are the correct orientation for the speaker. So another application is Disneyland's Haunted House, kind of a fun application. 
So you and your family are riding a doom buggy throughout the haunted house, but you don't realize that there's a reflective pla a pane of glass. All you perceive is, are these ghostly apparitions dancing with each other. This uses um, what I explained previously. There are some animatronics on the top and bottom of you. And then some light illuminates these objects and then uh, travels to this glass pane that has to be reflective yet transmissive. And then this, the virtual images are created and then you see the ghostly apparitions that I pointed out here. This is another application of Pepper's ghost. <clears throat> and then you can actually use it to bring people from the dead. What, this is what we call a digital doubles. So you can actually display a video of a person and then you can actually have them perform on stage. So this example, Michael Jackson passed away, but in 2014 they wanted to bring him back uh, to do a concert, so they used the Pepper's Ghost effect to make him appear that he was performing on stage. So I'm going to show that video. So you can see even though it's such a simple effect and relatively inexpensive, um, it really looks like Michael Jackson is there. that, I hope that in your everyday life, you, you think about, you know, what what makes everyday life happen. So if you see something like this, you say, oh, that's the Pepper's ghost effect. And, you know, you have a new piece of knowledge. So thank you. Here, this is the, you know, real life demonstration of Pepper's ghost. You know, I just showed the diagram, but now I want to show how it actually works in real life. So we have this uh, TV screen over here, and it displays an image of a jellyfish. And we actually have four jellyfish over here, one for each surface of the pyramid. So what uh, this does is the image travels to the surface, this plexiglass surface, and then, as I said, those Fresnel equations govern how much of that light is going to be reflected and transmitted, which is why this effect is possible. But pretty much the jellyfish travel up to each of these surfaces, and then this 45 degree angle of the surfaces actually allows for the jellyfish to get reflected in the correct orientation. So then when the four jellyfish are reflected, these virtual images are created so that in the middle you can see this full floating jellyfish and it looks pretty three-dimensional even though it's not quite a hologram as I explained.